Hello, welcome back. Okay, the bobber build, Royal Enfield Meteor. Now, last video, we got it all running and I've been out for a ride in it as well. So I'll stick up a couple of pictures. I didn't take any video while I was out, sorry. But what we're gonna do today, we're gonna have a play with a couple of interesting little things that I want to try. First of all, we're gonna take some of the things off this. So uh, let's show you that. Okay, so Royal Enfield Meteor, here's the standard back end. Solo seat, pillion pad, I'm sure you've all seen it. So obviously I just want to have a solo seat look. I want to take this away. I've already done a bit of disassembly. Disassembly? Disassembly. So I'm just going to pull these off quick. It'll make it faster for you. So this is a... Uh, I'm not sure what model they call it, but it came with the uh, standard backrest. It's just four bolts each side. I've already undone these, obviously. I don't have the hands of Allen keys. Bolts. It's quite a lot of thread lock on these, as you can see. These were really stiff. And then this will just come away. I think some. If you haven't got this, it comes with just grab handles, but I assume they come off in the same way. This is quite weighty. There's a good weight to this. I just thought this would all be plastic. It's a nice aluminium frame. That's a sticker on eBay. Oh, there you go. Now that will also loosen the pillion pad, which I've already loosened. And that reveals the subframe. Let's just pop this down. Now that's quite a significant piece of metal, really. Mud guard bolts up into this. This will come off, but there's a bit of a complication to that, which we'll come to you next. Rear light, obviously I've done that again. quite nice. I might like to reuse that. Nice quality stuff. Now, once you've got the pillion pad off, you've got two bolts at the rear. Once they're out, there's a tongue at the front. This will come out. All very straightforward. And there's that subframe. So this is the original frame of the bike. The shock mounts. And you've got this subframe and the mud guard mounts up into it. So four holes. These ones go into um, these captive nuts, but I just on the front and they're Got to get a spanner underneath for those. And that's the rear mud guard. I thought it was going to be plastic, but um, no, it's quite metal. Annoyingly though, it does have a flat profile on the top. So you've got a nice curve. You got these mounting plates, which sticks up, and then it's completely flat. And then you've got a couple of curves, and that folds down. Okay, right, subframe. One long bolt at the front, and then the bolts from the shock mounts, also screw through the side of it. This thing that actually looks like a dome nut is actually a bolt itself. So you've got another nut just on the inside here. 
but they only need to be loosened for reasons you'll see now. So once the front bolt is out, the rear subframe will just pop out because it's hooked at the front. So once these nuts are loose on the back of the shock mounting, oops, <laughs> once they're loose, but not too loose, your subframe will just pop off. I'll show you that now, actually. Okay, so there's the rear subframe. That's quite heavy. That's probably about four kilograms, I'm guessing. Obviously it has to be strong because that's, that's what's holding all the way to the pillion. And that's why the mud flap, the mud guard is flat on top. Because it fits onto that profile, obviously. Okay, so that's what's left at the rear of the bike. You've got this plastic arch here, which is what the mud guard, let's just grab that again. The mud guard just kind of rests against that plastic receiver there. So when water sprays round, it gets carried down the back and back to the road. I think that's the air box under there. Okay, that's it. Obviously, it would have taken a bit longer if I hadn't done it first, just to um, disconnect the rear wiring and loosen those bolts. But that's quite quick and fast. And that's what it looks like. I'll just step aside so you can see without my face in the way. So that's quite a bit gone from the back end. So that's just that subframe, the seats and the mud guard. Now, actually, I can stick the seat back on. There's two rubber bungs that sit on the uh, seat frame here. And that's quite secure. But obviously, you can't bolt it down because these bolt holes here, that subframe is gone. Although it is quite secure, and I think I can probably sit on that. Yeah, you can sit on that. That's quite cool looking actually, isn't it? I like that. In fact, because those rubber bungs are sitting on the frame tubes, I think you could probably find a way. You could cut these tabs off There's also a slight cutout in the in the seat as well, isn't there? Because obviously the pillion pad would have gone against that and hidden that. Conceivably, you could bodge that. You could screw something into there just to pull this down because it rests on these rubber lugs. So we'll have a think about that. I like that. I like that. I don't know. I've always just wanted to be a solo rider. I, I'm always being terrible with pillions. Perhaps I, I'm just a bad rider. But uh, just the thought of having someone on the back really freaks me out somehow. It's like I just want to be responsible for my own life. And um, having someone on the back, it, I, just, I just can't enjoy the riding. So, And it looks cool, doesn't it? But that, that's going to be great. Obviously, if you've been sort of Googling Meteor Bobbers, it's quite common to have a tiny little fender here. But it somehow looks a bit unbalanced just for the... So I'm not sure... I'm not quite sure what to do with that yet. How far to take that. But I like, I like it, I think. That's got promise there. 
Now, the original. There's the original. Oh, yeah. So the original would have been there like that. But this isn't ideal. Oh. That's on the chain guard now. Hang on. Oh, you need to look at this. Uh, I just need something to hold this up. Uh, hang on a sec. Look at that. So that's just the original. I've just shoved it down behind the wheel. Let me get out of the way so you can have a look. Let's come and have a look. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. It's not ideal because I've got those tabs on the back of the seat still and obviously I've just shoved it down the back for now. That's pretty cool. See how much further I can get that to go down there. So that looks bad, doesn't it? Obviously, we've got this, um, all these light mounting holes on top, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay, there we are. There we are, just down level with it. That looks really nice. I really like that. I like the curve off the tank into the seat. And then off the mudguard. That's really nice. Look at that curve. It's very complimentary, isn't it? Even this lower curve, look. Down. The Hunter has that a bit as well, and their rear midguard, I've noticed. It's a lovely curve on the Hunter. That's really cool. Oh, perhaps it's just me. I really like that. So there's the original light mount. If I put the light there, that's only good for aeroplanes, isn't it? Although, you know, who cares? If I could just make that sit up, maybe. Because it is a nice light. That's interesting. That's interesting. Obviously it all falls down a bit, a little here, because there's those mounting tabs. And here's that mounting flange. Although it's not insurmountable. We could even plus you could some if we can cut this off. We can cut this off. We could even mount a light here, can we? A sort of wide, flat light. <laughs> yeah. That is cool. So if we take the seat off. Obviously, it shouldn't be shoved down there. It needs to be cut so that it sits against this 
interface. Because that's that's how it was originally. And we've done a massive bodge. <laughs> and just shoved that down there. That's very interesting. Now, that went really well. I didn't think that was going to work out. That looks really good. So that's thrown me a bit of a curveball now because I thought I'd have to come up with something really radical to deal with that seat. And uh, some of the Bob, some of the Google ones you may have seen, they've got sort of a frame built on top of the frame, and then they've got one of those seat pads on. And I thought I might have had to do something like that. But from what we just saw, you know, I might be just cutting that mud guard, sticking it on. Meh. But there's something I want to try. Obviously, the Meteor is the same platform as the Classic 350. And I saw one of those, and I thought, well, that, that can have a solo seat without the subframe. So something different is going on. So I had a look online. I got this off eBay. It's a classic 350 seat. But, because it's from a salvage yard, they left this bracket on the bottom. If you just bought a classic 350 seat, it wouldn't have this metal bracket. That's part of the bike. So you wouldn't usually see it for sale, because if you, someone had sold it, they wouldn't be able to put a replacement seat on, because they'd be missing this. And you can see where these holes are going to go. So, can we put a classic 350 seat on this Meteor? Okay, so our Meteor, classic 350 seat with the bracket. And hopefully we're going to get this on you can see that these holes here would originally, on a classic 350, line up with these holes. Now I don't know if they share the same frame. I know they're based on the same platform, but I don't know if there's detailed differences. I do know the tank is different though. I think a classic 350 tank is lower and not quite as wide. But if this front mounting here and this tongue piece are similar, well, let's try it. Right, okay. The tongue looks like it should be not in the tongue. This piece of metal, that looks like it should be higher because it's not lining up with this. And the, the hole for this tongue doesn't seem to be far enough this way because I, I think these tanks are fatter. Oh, it's not far that too. If I nearly there, nearly there. I can see daylight through the holes. But it's not quite there. this bolt in. I can see daylight through the holes so it can't be too far off. Oh, who's texting me now? Right, one way or another this is going on. It's so close now. 
They're so close now. Oh, nearly. Oh, it's going. Yes. This has got rubber, rubber bungs at the front as well, sitting on the frame. A bit like the original seat, but up here, not back here. Let's move the camera. Okay, okay, check it out. There is a classic 350 seat on a Meteor. Look at that. That's brilliant. I can see it's very different already, because if you look, look at all this space under this top frame tube. Before, that seat filled that entire gap. But now, you've got all this space underneath. That's cool, let's get you a better view. Okay, let's hop on the bike. Oh, that's a lot higher. Oh yeah, that's a lot different. It's a lot higher. That is much higher. And the bars feel really close now. So obviously the back of the seat before was here somewhere. So I'm, it's come right forward and up. So it feels like right over the bars, a bit like a a scrambler or an adventure bike. Yeah, the bars feel like that. They're, they're right here. Well, I mean they are. And I feel instead of the stretch, it feels like the pegs. It feels like the pegs are just there as, as if they were the mid mounts again. But it's really good. It's really good. Good. Oh. But you can see how much higher it is. I don't know if you can see my feet there. I mean, I'm five foot ten, but I'm, I'm kind of going the balls of my feet. Look at that. The flats of my feet won't even touch the ground now. But up on the balls of my feet is fine. feels like a totally different bike. And I've sat, sat in the Classic 350 and it's similar to that, well, obviously. But I think the Classic 350 bars, I have a feeling, have got a lower rise, so they're further away. But because we've got the Meteor bars, which are designed for a seat further back, they feel like they're just right comfortable too. That is cool. Now, what about mudguard? Right, let's hop off. So, that's the new back end. Classic 350 seat, everything else gone. Okay. Very different. Obviously we've got all this space now. Funny that's just not so noticeable on a Classic 350. 
obviously it's got its own mud guard. That's weird, isn't it? We got this space. It's about 60 millimeters. Now, if you try the same thing with that mud guard, I have a feeling that's not going to look as good with this. Trying to push it a bit further to um, hide this bloody flange, which is sticking up. Originally, this subframe bolted to this. This flat bit isn't too bothersome. I think the grinder will be coming out shortly. Now, where's that bit of foam? Okay, angle's a bit bizarre, you can work with that. Right, I'm gonna stand back and have a look. Oh, they, you stay and have a look. Let me know if anything happens. Okay, the angle's bad. The angle's bad. However, it's got potential. It's got potential. I'd like this to be lower, but I can't, I can't really do that without cutting it or taking out this, uh, the plastic part, but we'll, we'll be doing that. But again, I'm pretty excited by that. I'm pretty excited. This is what I sound like when I'm excited. Mmm, very British. Let's have a look from further back. Okay, so classic 350 seat, original mud guard, bodged again. Obviously, I want to push that down. But I can't without cutting a bit off. Or perhaps removing the airbox just temporarily to um, play with the angle there. Plank. I do like that. Obviously, a much shorter exhaust. Cut these off. Shorter mud guard. Very different tyres. I'll just point the tyres out in case you've never seen a tyre before. That's really good. What I've seen as well is you can um, you could have a light under here. I've seen sort of chopper lights. I've got the original indicators, which I don't mind so much. I know everyone likes to go for the tiny little indicators, but um, I don't mind indicators. That's just strange. Well, obviously, but perhaps on the back there. I quite like lower bars as well. I wonder what classic 350 bars are like, although I think they're quite narrow. So that was some interesting stuff. Well, it was to me anyway. I hope you enjoyed uh, sharing that with me. Thanks for sticking around. Please consider liking and subscribing if you'd like to stay with me in a see where this all ends up because that as word of the day 
It's interesting, isn't it? So, thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Oh, my knees! <laughs>